Hello, hello, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. You guys, I want to talk about something that I think about a lot, and I think it's a result of getting older. I think it's a result of having a little bit more stability in my life now. And I think it's also something that is coming up in my mind a lot because of the fact that one, I do feel like I, um, like my transition is kind of behind me. Um, I do feel more grounded. I feel more at peace with myself. I feel, um, quote unquote, a little bit more complete. Um, and I know that it's taken a lot of years, but um, I'm here. So as a lot of you guys know, I think it was in 2013 or 2014, I had an orchiectomy, which is AKA getting uh, castrated, which is AKA having um, your testicles removed. Um, it sounds very weird to say that because I very much consider myself a woman and it's just weird to say, you know, I think even saying that I had like SRS or got a, a V, you know, doesn't sound as weird, but I digress. Um, but as a lot of you know, I did have that procedure done and um, I wanted that procedure done since I was 18 years old. Um, but I had some outside influences that were kind of telling me not to, you know, I come from a time and I'm obviously not old by any means, but when I transitioned, there was very limited resources um, and there was very limited information. I mean, your only avenue of information at that time for myself and for other trans women was like TS Roadmap or it was other trans women. Um, and so with that being said, I waited until I was like 22, 23. Um, and I don't regret my surgery at all. Um, but I do have one very large regret that comes with orchiectomy and at least a regret that I have. This isn't in general. I'm not speaking on anybody else, but I do regret the fact that I did not preserve any of my sperm. You know, when I thought at the time that I would never have children or I couldn't even fathom the idea, I think I was coming from a place of, you know, feeling like that opportunity wasn't in the cards for me. Um, and I always, since I was young, have wanted children. And to be honest, I think I've um, fantasized about the idea of being a mother more than I have about being a wife or being a business mogul or anything else you know some people have like um fantasies of being famous or of you know finding a, a beautiful husband and all of these things and i think for me uh whether i want to admit it or not most of the time i very much um i do like children and i do picture myself being a parent at some point um, but at the time I was in such a rush to kind of rush through my transition and I wanted to just feel, you know, good in my body that I didn't really see the future. Um, and I don't blame, uh, myself for, you know, rushing because it's really difficult. You guys, when you don't have, um, representation of what it is that you want, like I've never met a, um, I never have personally in my personal real life, I'm not talking through Instagram, I'm not talking about Facebook, but I haven't actually met a trans woman who has gone through the adoption process or has, um, you know, used surrogacy to have a child. So um, I don't really know a lot of trans mothers. Um, I do know some trans parents, but I do, also know that they um, had children prior to transitioning. So um, obviously I'm not discrediting that, but I'm post-transition and it's very hard for me to imagine, uh, you know, having children. To be honest, you guys, I, you know, this sounds really fucked up, but I didn't even picture myself getting to 31 um, because again, 
when I was 17, 18, I didn't know a lot of older trans women. I didn't even know trans women that were really a lot in their 30s. Um, and I didn't really know any that were in their 50s or 60s. You know, it's like, it's just, it's a really sad reality. And obviously things are getting better. And, you know, with Facebook and Instagram and all of these different apps, we get to connect with people all over the world. But that wasn't my reality at that time. Um, and I've never been, you know, in 2012, 13, I didn't even use really Instagram. I didn't really, I had Facebook, but like, I didn't even, I really didn't know. Um, and the reason I even decided to get my work yet, I mean, I went through with it was because um, I used to watch a YouTuber. Her name is um, Angela Nari. And I watched her video and she kind of gave me and inspired me and gave me the strength to even go through with it because um, I was really terrified. And so she had great results with it and she seemed very happy. It alleviated some dysphoria for her. And that's ultimately what it gave me. So I'm very grateful that I was able to have that procedure. But I do regret the fact that I did not preserve any sperm because I'm getting older um, I see more possibilities for myself. Uh, my circumstances financially, emotionally, mentally are very different now. Um, and I really do wish that I could just, um, you know, have a kid and be able to see his face, uh, be able to see my face on him or her. Um, I would be super grateful to be able to adopt, but again, I've never known anyone who's gone through the adoption process. So to me, it kind of seems impossible. I know it isn't, but again, when you have never seen anyone go through it um, and you don't know any transgender women that are moms, it's very scary. I didn't picture myself even owning a home. So for me, Buying a house was a huge, huge accomplishment for me. Um, and so, yeah, you guys, I mean, I, I just been feeling a lot of that lately. I've been kind of wishing that I would have, you know, and, and Dr. Toby Meltzer, the one who did my uh, surgery, he did talk to me about it, but I was just so like, no, no, let's go, let's do it, let's schedule this. No, I'm never gonna have kids, and if I do, I'll just adopt, you know? Um, so I really wish I would have waited. Uh, I really wish I not even waited to have the surgery. I just wish I would have made a different decision as far as preserving that in like a bank or whatever. I don't know how the process really is, but um, I just really wish I would have um, looked at my options a little bit more. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not, you know, it's it makes me a little sad sometimes, but you know, guys, we get to choose, um, we get to choose our own family. You know, luckily I have a very beautiful biological family. I have siblings and brothers and sisters, mom and dad. I love my family to death, my nieces and nephews. I love everybody so much. Um, but it would just, um, I don't know. It would just be nice to be able to carry on my legacy, but, I will definitely uh, check my options as far as adoption goes in the future years and whatnot. But if you do, if you do plan on wanting to have your own children and you are wanting to move forward with SRS or an orchiectomy, um, definitely look into the option of um, sperm banks. Or uh, I think that's really what they call them, you guys. I'm so ignorant on this, but I'm pretty sure they're called sperm banks where you actually, like, I think it's where people donate them. But uh, I know, like, when you get an orchiectomy, they take some and they you save it somewhere. So if you want to use it for future purposes, whatever, um, to have a baby, obviously. But, yeah, you guys, I do, I do regret that a little bit. Um... But with that being said, I am so blessed and grateful for where I am at. I cannot complain. Um, it's so surreal um, to have the life that I have. You know, I, I wished for half of the life that I have when I was 17. And I have everything I want. I mean, I've gotten a lot of what I want. So um, I know I'm not saying that like in an arrogant way, but I'm just... I'm so happy. 
so anyways you guys make sure you like this video comment subscribe and smash that notification button so you never miss an upload i'm kidding you guys but i will see you all in the next video